Perfect. It is autumn in South Africa and with hunting seasons beginning to open up again, I've made my way to a beautiful dairy farm surrounded by rolling hills, wild bush and the milky brown fish river. A few thousand head of cattle call this place home and feed free range off the pastures but they aren't the only animals grazing on this grass and that's why we're here. There are thousands of Egyptian geese here and our goal today is to take out as many as we can. The previous time we came out here we cleaned up with the 2250 managing to get a good number of birds down using little 50 grain VMAXs and this time it will be more of the same although today I'm trying out the new APR1C reticle which has just been released for the 4 to 16 element helix. Once again I'm joined by my friend Jason who has bought a new 6.5 Creedmoor so this will be interesting in the sense that we have two cartridges with pretty similar case capacities but vastly different bullets. The 22250 being loaded today with 50 grain nozzler ballistic tip varmints and the 6.5 with 143 grain ELDXs, almost three times the weight. Our morning starts with a quick zero check and scope cam setup as we head down to the river valley. Well, we've just set the, the trigger cam up on, on Jason's uh, scope. Obviously, different people have different eyes and their, your ocular lens is set in different ways. So Jason's eyes are different to mine. And last time we came here, you saw that my scope cam, when Jason was shooting, the footage wasn't always clear. So now we've got a different scope cam that we can set up for Jason's eyes. And what's nice about the trigger cam is that make, it, it makes it so easy. Just comes with a tool, unscrew the top cap, focus the reticle, um, connect through Wi-Fi to your phone and you can actually see on your phone when it's in focus and it took us probably two minutes to do that so trigger cam set up and you should be able to see what Jason's uh, shots look like as well both the rifles are zeroed uh, I think we've got the 6.5 for longer shots 22 to 50 for close-up stuff and let's get to work lots of geese here I think we're gonna be in for a good day We have plenty of ground to cover and our strategy for the day will be to drive from pivot to pivot, park two to three hundred meters from any flock we see, take a couple shots and then move on. I actually shot a goose with the air gun off camera to start the tally but soon get an opportunity from nice and close with the 22 to 50 to start the day off on the right foot. First goose of the day, well, second goose of the day down, but first one with the 22 to 50, and it was the easiest shot you can imagine. Up. That's probably 80 to 100 meters, so center of mass, and down he goes. Awesome. Jason spots some movement in another field a bit further off, and I use the quad as a rest to get steady, something that'll become pretty normal procedure from here on. Oh. Perfect. So that was 187 meters. It's still a chip shot for the 22 to 50. Um, from 100 meters zero, that's only two clicks up. But what's nice about using uh, the, this rangefinder, SIG um, BDX rangefinder, is I've programmed this rangefinder for this rifle, e even with a five mile per hour crosswind, which gives me a good idea of what to dial for wind as well. But I'll j I can just range the animal a second after it gives me the range, it gives me the, the, the elevation in mills, and it just, it's just two clicks up and super easy but so far really enjoying the scope it's very clear and hopefully the footage comes out clear as well but great start to the day and this is where things start to get tricky because we have quite a stiff breeze to contend with today and although the 22 to 50 is shooting blitzing fast those 50 grand bullets have quite an abysmal BC I think I should have held that on there I think I, I think I just missed off to the left this means that I had to hold off quite a bit for wind and often just miscalculated Thankfully, with this farm being the only green, grassy area for many miles, the geese have nowhere to go and they settle in a nearby field, allowing us to follow them. Okay, you can go for it. 
<laughs> oh, just missed him. We've managed to get a few this morning already. Um, also missed a couple, but still just finding the bearings on Matt's rifle. He's done pretty well this morning and cleaned up. Um, but yeah, looks like we've got a good day ahead. The geese don't seem to be flying around too much and if they do, they're just hopping over to the next camp. So I think we've got a lot of geese coming up. It's pretty easy to lose these birds in the long grass. So while the locations of where they dropped are still fresh in our memories, we try to collect them and place them on the roadside where we can gather them later. <laughs> How are your feet there? Yes, they are so... <laughs> terrible. <laughs> To be honest, we weren't happy with our shooting performance in the first hour or two. We just made far too many errors with wind calls and could have dropped a few more birds if we'd just taken a bit more time to get accurate readings with a Kestrel. But we learned our lesson and as the day moved on, we became much better at choosing our opportunities more carefully. Nice. Yeah, first animal or anything that's living that shot with my rifle, so about time it's taken a couple of shots to get you, but I uh, finally got one. And 250 meters off a pole is not, not easy either, so yeah, well done. I mean, I didn't know if it was the wind or what that I was missing with, maybe I'm just not a good shot, but <laughs> cool. I like it. Under normal circumstances, the 6.5 would be the rifle of choice for longer shots. That heavy, high BC bullet resists the wind way better. However, this rifle is so new that Jason hasn't really been able to create a profile for it. We can only estimate the trajectory past 200 meters. As we're driving around, we spot a goose pretty close to us and not wanting to spook it by climbing off the quad, I take a quick opportunistic shot off the shoulder and manage to connect. Well, that one happened quickly. Uh, goose at probably 70, 80 meters. Um, held dead on, hit record, and there he is right there. So, little 22 to 50, doing the job. Absolutely love this gun. I literally just popped it over Jason's shoulder, and it's gonna so little recoil um, that it's not very hold sensitive. A bigger rifle, maybe even Jason 6.5, might have been a bit too hold sensitive to do stuff like that. But 22 to 50 is built for stuff like this and does the job really well. Two hundred and eighty-two meters. Um, is that 0.7 moles and straight down? Of course, the ideal situation looks like this: lying prone with time to get dead steady and pick a target. In this instance, though, Jason has to take a really long shot and probably just gets the wind a little bit wrong. 
this farm is actually in a basin with cliffs all around so the wind 400 meters away can be totally different to the wind at your firing position. As has been the case the whole day, it's no big deal when the geese take flight because we know that they'll just land in another field. This time they land just over the hill and the only way we can actually get a clear shot at them is to climb up the center of the pivot and shoot off of it like some sort of PRS barricade. Yeah, there are a lot of variables here. Yeah. This bottom thing that I'm standing on is so wonky. Yeah. Two geese down, Jason took the first one at around 250 meters. We're on a bit of a rickety platform here, it's a bit awkward, so we're testing our sort of PRS skills shooting off sandbags, um, but managed to <coughs> managed to get one down. It is difficult, you know, you, you have to time your trigger pull quite carefully, but I think we got it right there, and it's great to get some more with the 6.5. Awesome. With the birds having moved off again, we decide to head back to the farmhouse for a lunch break and just in time too as the rain starts coming down, making an already mucky farm even muckier. We took some time to make some good cups of coffee, exactly what we needed after a busy morning, and some Budavos rolls before heading back out for round two. Well, we timed our lunch stop perfectly. As we arrived here for lunch, it started pouring and as we're about to leave, it looks like the rain's moved on. There's quite a lot of wind though, so I'm a little bit concerned that we're going to struggle uh, with the, the 22 to 50 in, in the wind. Um, and of course with Jason's rifle, although it's very capable in the wind, he hasn't really done a proper trajectory um, calculation or validation yet. We don't really know how it's going, his rifle actually performs out at, at extended distances. So let's see what we can do with the geese and uh, we'll take it from there. Once again, I'm resting on a pole here, and you can see just how difficult it was to keep the rifle still with the wind gusting like this. Nice. These shots are definitely worth looking at again. Uh, my shot was slightly low here, but still puts it down on the spot. Jason's shot was textbook, right in the clockwork. We've had some good success today, but having to drive a good few hours to get back home, we decide to slowly start wrapping up and after collecting all the latest casualties, we rotate fields one last time. By now we've learned that using the quad as a rest is probably the easiest way to get steady and both Jason and I end up getting our birds down here. He's not dead from the bullet, he's dead from the fumes. <laughs> and I just couldn't resist taking one last shot. This was probably my favorite for the day. Perfect. 
with that fairy tale ending, the fireworks display of feathers being launched into the sky, we finally call it a day and head out on one last collection cruise to look for a few stragglers from earlier. Well, I'd say that's a pretty good day of shooting. Uh, we've got 14 geese here. There may have been one that we, we couldn't find, but 14, 15 geese, um, that's, a, that's an awesome haul for the day. Um, so you've got to be happy with that. 22, 250 performed well. Uh, Jason got to take some uh, sort of virgin hunting shots with his new 6.5. Um, and despite a little bit of wind, we uh, managed to get quite a few of them down at I'd say pretty long distances for, I mean, small sort of light bullets like this, 400 plus meters is quite a challenge. So very happy with that. We may take a little bit of time now just to shoot a few, few doves or we might pack up. We've kind of lost track of the time, but all in all, fantastic day. And I hope you enjoyed seeing this footage. I have to say this was the most fun I've had in a really long time. And to spend it with good friends in such a beautiful location was just the cherry on top. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.